Hello and welcome to TR Physics and today I'm going to introduce you to Stefan's Law. So Stefan's Law, this is the same Stefan Boltzmann who created the Boltzmann constant that is in uh, thermal physics, also looked at how light and how power was distributed over the surface area of a star. And more importantly, he looked at the relationship between the amount of power that was released and the temperature of the star that um, was created. So temperature, of course, from, uh, from thermal physics is related to kinetic energy. So 3 over 2 kT is a half m C R M S squared. So the temperature is directly proportional to the kinetic energy of the atoms in the actual star itself which therefore means that the energy that is being released from the star must also be related to the temperature too. And I'm actually looking at the power. So I'm relating power, which is the rate of energy. Okay, so the rate of energy that is transmitted, I am looking at the power, and I'm assuming this is going over all the whole surface area of the star itself. So Stefan's law is this, that the power emitted from the star, and this is measured in watts, okay, equals the Stefan constant, which is found at the front of your data sheet, and is, got a very long unit, but is, do, 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 the Stefan constant, which is 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8, times by the surface area, times by the temperature of the object to the fourth power. <coughs> so, Stefan's, con Stefan's law is that power emitted is proportional to the temperature of an object raised to the fourth power. Okay. So let's actually talk about the surface area. So the surface area of a star is a sphere, which means that this area here is also 4 pi r squared. Okay, so I can rewrite this formula as power is sigma 4 pi r squared t to the 4. So a bigger star, okay, a bigger star will give out more power or a hotter star could give out more power. So let's actually do some calculations to do some comparisons. So we're going to talk about our sun. So our sun has got, and you can check this into the data sheet, our sun's temperature is approximately about 5,800 Kelvin. And the radius of our sun is in your data sheet, and it's 6.96 times 10 to the 8 meters. And we can work out the power that is emitted from our sun using this formula. So power is sigma a t to the 4. So that's sigma times by 6.96 times 10 to the 8 squared times by 4 pi times by 5,800 to the power of 4. So 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8, which is the Stefan constant, times by 4 pi times by 6.96 nine six times ten to the eight squared and then times by five thousand eight hundred to the power of four and I get an answer of four well <laughs> three point nine times ten to the twenty six watts so this is how much energy power or energy per second that our sun emits on average okay this is assuming no fluctuations in sunspots, etc. This is the amount of power that is emitted from our sun every second. 
Now, we do not receive that amount of energy on us on Earth. We actually receive a much smaller amount, and this is because of the inverse square law. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this value, and I'm going to say this is the amount of power the star releases. And now I want to imagine that this star, so here's the sun, and here is the Earth, okay, and it is one astronomical unit apart, or 1.5 times 10 to the 11 metres. I know at the surface of the sun, it emits 3.9 times 10 to the 26 watts. I now want to take the same amount of power, but spread it woof, over a sphere that could encompass our Earth. And I'm going to use the idea that power follows, or intensity follows, the 1 over r squared rule. Okay, so I have got my distance here of 1.5 times 10 to the 11. Okay, so this power here, I'm going to now imagine that my sphere, my circle, is now this big. Okay, so it's being shared over a much bigger surface area. So let's work out the surface area of this new sphere. So the surface area, 4 pi r squared. So 4 times pi, whoops, 4 times pi, so it's 1.5 times 10 to the 11 squared, is going to be 2.83 times 10 to the 23. So this surface area, okay, is blowing up this circle by that many times. So this means the energy is going to decrease by that amount. So I'm going to take my power and go I get an answer of 1400 watts. Okay. This is 1400 watts, so this is intensity, not power, and this is watts per meters squared. So I know this is the amount of power that it, by Stefan's law that is generated at the surface of the sun. What I'm doing here is I am working out how much power we would have if the sun was blown, had the same amount of power, but was blown up to be approximately up to Earth here. Which means that we receive on Earth about 1400 watts per meter squared. And with this information, we're able to work out all sorts of things given um, the idea of solar panels, etc. We can understand that this is how much power we receive per meter squared on the Earth. Therefore, this is, uh, if we had a metre squared um, solar panel, that is how much power it would be expected to receive from the sun. Okay. So this is using the inverse square law. And the reason it is the inverse square law is this. Because the intensity equals the power over 4 pi r squared. Where r squared was the radius from the sun to the earth. So if the power is constant, 4 and pi are constant, the intensity is directly proportional to 1 over r squared, which is the inverse square law. So that there is Stefan's law and looking at intensity of a star at a much further distance away.